When I was 19, I spent weeks on Craigslist looking for my first car. My mom was sick of driving me to work every day, and I had maybe $6,000 saved up. I didn't want to spend it all if I didn't have to. I wanted to get something that was good enough and that wasn't going to fall apart within only a year of owning it, so I ended up spending a little bit more than I wanted to. There was a 2010 Honda Civic with 45,000 miles on it, and the asking price was 4500 I was pretty interested in the car because it looked to be in pretty good shape, and in the description it said that there was nothing wrong with it at all. I gave the guy a text, letting him know that I was interested in knowing more about the car, and he called me almost right away. I answered it after a couple of rings because I didn't want to seem weird by picking up the phone within only a second of him calling. He spoke briefly about the car, and he answered a couple questions that I had. I asked him if he would take any less than the 4500 to which he replied maybe. And then we could talk about the price later on when we met up. To me, that sounded like a yes. I was going to try and haggle the price down to $4,000, but I would buy it for $4,000 cash if that's all he would be willing to budge down to. So we set up a time and place to meet, which was 6.30 at his place the next day. I said great, and I got a hold of a couple of my friends to see if they could take me to look at the car. Unfortunately, they were all busy, so I was left with my last option, my mom. Thankfully, she made time in her schedule to take me, and that was our plan, to meet up with this man at 6.30 tomorrow evening. It was only a 20-minute drive or so, which wasn't too bad if you think about it. As we started to get much closer, we were realizing what kind of area we were in. It was kind of trashy, to be honest. With garbage all over the side of the roads and homeless people on every intersection, it seemed. That's when I started to feel some anxiety and wish that my dad was there with us. But I swallowed my fear as I had to be tough for my mom. When we got there, the house looked like all the others on the street. If I would have been here in any other circumstance, I probably would have thought the house was abandoned because one of the front windows was boarded up and it looked really rough on the outside. The grass looked like it hadn't been mowed for weeks, maybe even months. And the siding was brutally dirty and I got a horrible feeling. But despite all of this, we still pulled into the driveway. I got out of the car and I knocked on the door while my mom stayed in the car with it still turned on, but locked, just in case. I think she may have planned on coming out if the guy seemed like a fairly decent person and if we thought there wasn't anything sketchy going on. I knocked on the screen door and from the inside I heard someone yelling and then a dog barking. I guess the man was yelling at the dog to shut up and I think he put him away somewhere. Not too long after that, I saw the shadow of the man inside, but I couldn't see him well. It was hard to see through the screen door as it was really bright outside but dark in the house. That's when he told me to come inside and that the door was unlocked and that he put his dog away so it was safe. I looked back at my mom and I put my index finger in the air trying to signal to her to wait and that I'll be back in a minute. Thinking back, that was probably the stupidest thing I ever could have done in that situation and I realize how bad it sounds but I walked in. I was greeted by the man that I talked to on the phone. He was some hillbilly looking guy, with his shirt off and half naked. He was wearing some shorts, but it almost looked like underwear. He was probably 50 years old, but he looked much older. Probably because of all the drugs. I vividly remember his house smelling like dog shit. Like literally dog poop. He asked if I wanted to take a look at the car, to which I replied, of course. He told me to follow him to the back, so I did. He said it was parked in the garage in the backyard and that we could just take the back door out there since he exclaimed that it would be easier. I followed him carefully, keeping as much distance behind him without seeming weird. Until he stopped at the back door and he held it open for me with this creepy looking smile on his face. We then walked to the barn and there were a couple of cars in there which was a good sign. I noticed the Honda Civic he posted almost right away and we talked about it some more. I asked him if he would take $4,000 cash if I liked it after I took the test drive. He started laughing and he was saying that I wasn't going to be able to test drive it until I gave him the money. I told him I could give him $2,000 cash until I get back and that I'll give him the other $2,000 if I want to buy it. And if not, I'll just take my money back. But he still wouldn't do that either. I told him I was no longer interested in the car and then he started screaming at me. It seemed like almost as soon as he started yelling, I also heard my mom screaming from the driveway. I ran over to her as fast as I could, and the old man tried chasing after me, but he was about as slow as a turtle. What I saw was a worst case scenario type thing. Another man had snuck up on my mom while she was in the car, and they tried to open the door. 
but when he realized it was locked, he tried to shatter the window, and somehow he did, and he started trying to yank my mom out of the car. I grabbed my pocket knife and I sliced the man in the arm, and then I hit him with direct penetration to his right leg, and he fell to the ground and he was screaming in pain. I turned around and the other guy that was supposed to sell me the car was closing in on me, but I started screaming at him and I was telling him to back off. My mom and I drove out of there as quick as you can say quick, and obviously we were freaking the hell out. That's quite the understatement though. I will never not carry a pocket knife with me wherever I go after that day. Or some type of protection at the very least. This happened quite a few years ago. I had just moved into a new house that I was really happy about. Rent was affordable and I was making some decent money when considering my expenses weren't very high. Didn't have a big yard by any means, but I still needed to get myself a cheap little push mower. I didn't want to spend two or three hundred on a brand new one, and I figured I could get something for much cheaper that works just fine on Craigslist. I did some searching, and I found a few that stuck out to me. I called around, and the guy I spoke with on the phone seemed really nice, and he was only a few minutes away, and he said I could come by whenever. I hopped in my truck and headed that way shortly after our conversation. As soon as I got there, I knocked on the front door and waited. A few seconds went by and the big garage door started opening. It was on the other side of the house, but I could hear it, so I walked over and by the time I made it there, he was already halfway through the garage. We shook hands and we chatted it up for a second. It was a normal garage that you would probably expect to see from any middle-aged and middle-class man. He had bikes in there, tools, and a bunch of random shit, just like anyone else's garage. But there was no mower in sight. Maybe he had it stashed somewhere else, I thought. I kind of just figured he would have had it ready for easy access since he knew I was going to be there soon. But I brushed it off, and I just asked him if I could see the mower finally. Oh yeah, of course, he said. I'll be right back. Just hang tight for me. I told him okay, and I waited. He walked right back inside, and I grew impatient. There was a solid five minutes of me just standing there waiting. I left my phone in the truck, so I had nothing to do except snoop around. I wasn't trying to be nosy. I was just walking back and forth, kind of checking stuff out. Probably trying to cure my brain of my ADHD-like anxiety. I stumbled upon a laminated picture that was next to the fridge, kind of sticking halfway under it. I went to pick it up, thinking that maybe he had misplaced it with the idea of giving it to him. But when I looked at it, it was a picture of a dead woman in a bathtub. I literally almost vomited when I realized it was way too real to be a fake picture. It had to have been real. I wasn't sure if he took the picture himself or where he got it from, but I was out. I started to walk away, and instantly and ironically, the garage door started to close. So in a panic, I ran that way to try to get out of the garage before I was trapped, and I thankfully made it out without hurting myself too much. I had to dive under and barrel roll out, but I was in the clear. I barely even processed what just happened, and I ran to my truck. Right before I jumped inside, the man came out from the side of the house with the mower. Hey man, where are you going? Don't you want the mower? I don't know why I did this. I clearly wasn't in my right mind, but I got back out of my truck and I walked over to him as if I was still interested in the mower. He then asked if I was okay, and I anxiously told him that I was just fine. I didn't want him to know that I knew about the picture, so I tried to play it off like I knew nothing, but he was acting quite strange. It's like he knew I was on to him. Why did the garage door close? I asked. Oh, this house is old, and sometimes things like to work themselves, you know? He then let out a chuckle, and he patted me on the shoulder, and he asked if I was scared of ghosts. It was only then that I noticed the mower he brought to me was not the mower he had in the pictures. He pulled out a Toro mower, and the one in the picture online was a Husqvarna. They're two completely different colors and brands, so I don't know who he thought he was fooling. I confronted him with that, and he tried to gaslight me into thinking I was wrong, but I knew I wasn't, because I specifically wanted the Husqvarna mower. I then started to piece together in my head that something was horribly off with this whole situation, especially after he started screaming at me to get off his property if I wasn't going to buy anything. I just ran back to my truck and I didn't look back. 
The amounts of panic I was going through at this point, you'd probably not believe. I was almost 100% sure that I had just encountered a serial killer and that maybe he was going to try to kill me. But once his plan went to shit, he decided to bail on it. Who knows what would have happened if I didn't make it out of the garage in time. He probably would have tried attacking me with a fucking sledgehammer or something. I called the police when I got home, but they said it wasn't enough for a search warrant, which I thought was complete bullshit. The night was heavy with anticipation as I sat at my desk, scrolling through the Craigslist ads. I needed a roommate desperately. The bills were piling up and I couldn't bear the burden alone anymore. With a mixture of hesitation and hope, I crafted a post seeking a compatible housemate and within hours, my inbox flooded with responses. One message stood out from the rest to me. It was an email from a man named Jonathan. His tone was polite, his words carefully chosen. He seemed like a decent prospect, and after exchanging a few emails, we decided to meet in person at a nearby coffee shop. The evening arrived, and as I made my way to the cafe, my nerves began to prickle. I had heard stories, like horror tales of Craigslist encounters gone wrong, but I pushed those thoughts aside, because I was determined to find a reliable roommate. I entered the cafe, scanning the room for a man who matched Jonathan's description. I spotted him at a corner table, so I approached with cautious optimism. He stood up, extending a hand in greeting. Jonathan was of average height, with neatly combed hair and a warm smile that put me somewhat at ease. We settled into a booth, the noise of the coffee shop surrounding us. Jonathan spoke softly, his voice moved like velvet. He told me about his job as a graphic designer, his hobbies, and his love for reading. It all seemed harmless, really, but there was something about his demeanor that made me slightly uncomfortable. His eyes, while friendly, held a certain intensity that sent a shiver down my spine at one point. We discussed the details of the apartment, setting ground rules and establishing boundaries. Jonathan appeared enthusiastic and eager to move in as soon as possible. I attributed his eagerness to a desire for a fresh start, much like myself. Despite the nagging doubts, I agreed to give him a chance, deciding to trust my instincts. Days turned into weeks, and Jonathan settled into his new living space. At first, everything seemed fine. He kept to himself a lot, spending most of his time in his room. Yet an unsettling presence seemed to seep through the apartment sometimes, casting a shadow over the atmosphere. I started noticing odd occurrences. A faint sound of whispers in the dead of night. Objects slightly out of place, and a feeling of being washed when I was alone sometimes. At first, I dismissed these as figments of an overreactive imagination, the byproduct of living with a stranger. But as the days passed, my unease grew. Late one evening, unable to ignore the nagging feeling any longer, I decided to investigate for myself. I crept towards Jonathan's closed bedroom door, with my heart pounding in my chest. I hesitated for a moment, debating whether to confront him or to retreat to the safety of my own room. Curiosity got the better of me. I turned the doorknob with trembling hands and I pushed open the door, revealing a dimly lit room. The air was thick with a strange smell, a mix of dampness and something faintly metallic. My eyes were drawn to a desk cluttered with peculiar objects, a stack of old photographs, an antique knife, and a worn out journal. My curiosity overwhelmed me, and against my better judgment, I approached the desk, flipping open the journal that was on there. What I read within those pages sent a chill coursing through my veins. They were filled with sinister poetry, disturbing sketches, and rambling thoughts that bordered on madness. As my eyes scanned through the pages, I realized that the words were not the musings of an eccentric artist, but rather the twisted thoughts of a troubled mind. Suddenly. A low voice pierced the silence, freezing me in my tracks. Enjoying my personal collection, I turned slowly with my heart pounding against my ribcage. There, standing in the doorway, was Jonathan, and he had this twisted smile creeping across his face. His eyes, once warm and inviting, were now filled with a dark and unsettling gleam. My voice caught in my throat as I struggled to find the right words. 
Fear tightened his grip around me, rendering me momentarily speechless. Jonathan took a step forward, his gaze never leaving mine. You shouldn't have snooped around my room, he hissed. The words slithering through the air like venom. He stumbled upon things that were meant to stay hidden. I took a step back. My mind was racing with thoughts of escape. And panic surged through me as I realized the danger it had unknowingly invited into my life. The pieces began to fall into place. His unsettling presence, the whispers in the night, the uncanny feeling of being watched. I had welcomed a predator in my home. Jonathan's eyes narrowed, his smile widening in a grotesque grin. He moved towards me with deliberate steps, each one echoing in the tense silence of the room. I backed away, my mind racing for a way out. Adrenaline flew through my body, fueling my fight or flight response. In one swift motion, I lunged towards the door and my hands fumbled to unlock it. Panic clouded my vision, making my surroundings blur into a disorienting haze. The sound of Jonathan's heavy footsteps closed in behind me. Just as my trembling fingers managed to unlock the door, I felt a sharp pain in my shoulder, a searing heat spreading through my body. I cried out in agony, stumbling out into the hallway. Blood stained the front of my shirt, and the realization of being wounded only intensified my desperation. He had just stabbed me. With all the strength I could muster, I ran, fueled by fear and the instincts for survival. Each step was a struggle, my injured shoulder throbbing with every movement, but I pushed myself forward. My mind was fixated on finding help, finding safety. As I stumbled out onto the dimly lit street, cool night air rushed over me, offering a brief respite from the horrors behind. I desperately flagged down a passing car. The kind-hearted driver called the police, and moments later, sirens wailed in the distance. The police arrived, and their presence brought a semblance of security. They took my statement. Their faces were grim as I recounted the events that had unfolded with the confines of my own home. It was then that they revealed the chilling truth. Jonathan was already a wanted criminal known for his heinous acts of violence. Days turned into weeks as I recovered from the physical and emotional wounds inflicted by this deranged man. The ordeal left an incredible mark on my soul. With the support of friends and loved ones, I found a new home, one far away from the haunting memories of that apartment. The experience served as a stark reminder of the dangers that can arise from the realm of the unknown. And so, I tread forward, my gaze forever vigilant, Knowing that even in the most ordinary of places, darkness can lie hidden, waiting to undergo the unsuspecting.